Okay, today I want to talk about discouragement, the concept of being discouraged. And that's a general thing. We will touch on it in both the context of business and discouragement with what's happening in your business. And then more, maybe more generally speaking, discouragement in life. So first, uh, as always, I want to make sure that you have a pad of paper and a pen so that you can take a note, make a commitment to yourself that you will take something away today, no matter what, no matter how small, and you will take away something actionable and you will take action. Create a note with an action item that you can implement immediately. Okay, with that in mind, let's get started. First of all, let's distinguish and differentiate between discouragement and a more, far more serious condition of, say, depression. Now, um, we should never take lightly the concept of, of depression. And certainly, if you're sort of perpetually discouraged and you're really struggling emotionally with um, the state of things in your life, you probably want to seek some emotional, uh, professional rather, some professional help. And uh, there are a number of things that you might want to look at as well. Uh, you've got lots of resources out there that may be able to guide you if you're sort of on the wrong trajectory with respect to um, your overall emotional state. So again, I want to differentiate. I'm not speaking about a clinical depression here. I'm not qualified to give you advice on that other than to advise you to seek some professional help. But if you are sort of perpetually feeling that you're down, uh, but not clinically depressed, then you might want to consider the mechanism of dopamine and how that works in the brain. They, they refer to dopamine as a neurotransmitter as the motivational neurotransmitter. It's the thing that makes you feel good in almost anything you can think of, you know, eating a delicious piece of chocolate, when you when you get that sugar rush from a great dessert, of course, drugs, uh, opiates and cocaine, heroin, everything that gives a sense of euphoria and a really pleasurable uh, feeling, in fact, has a mechanism within the brain that releases dopamine. There's an area of the brain which is known as the reward center. I think it's the nucleus acubens. And that's where dopamine has its main role. And there's a thing about dopamine. How you know if you are getting a dopamine response to something is if you want more of it. If you want more, more, more. You can never get enough. That's a good indicator that there's a dopamine um, and dopamine is a very powerful and very important part of the human experience. It's not evil. It just can be, um, it can lead if you abuse something, and this, especially in the case of addiction, if you abuse something where you are constantly seeking that uh, dopamine hit, that rush, um, that pleasure experience, then it can lead to dependency and addiction. And so ask yourself, if there's some, so when you're feeling this emotional state that you're feeling down, are you sort of self-medicating in some way, whether it's food or a drug or alcohol or anything like that? And in, in whatever you're doing, are you doing it habitually time and again to get, um, to try to bolster yourself? Because what happens is your brain will adjust and the receptors in your brain, the dopamine receptors in your brain will uh, downregulate, uh, become less sensitive. And there's also another neurotransmitter. You can think of this one more as your contentedness or your happy uh, neurotransmitter, and that's serotonin. That gives you a feeling of well-being where, where things are, are good. That, you know, you're just content. You're, you're happy about life. And there's this... Um, inverse relationship between dopamine and serotonin and the more dopamine that your body releases it down regulates serotonin and so since you want contentedness and you want a feeling of well-being and and happiness you really want to be careful about the things in your life that release that dopamine and really control that by the way um I used uh, substances as examples, but it's also experiences. Um, 
such as, well, of course, sex is, is the one that everybody will associate, you know, chocolate and sex. They both have a, an effect in the reward center of your brain and a dopamine release. But um, what about video games and um, uh, other habit forming type things like uh, social media and that kind of thing? So if you find yourself just habitually wanting more and more, that's likely to be a dopamine uh, response in the brain and what I'd recommend to you is to try to taper down those things to a more healthy level and depending on what we're talking about there is a spectrum you know how benign is the thing if, if it's not very harmful in your life then maybe you, you don't have to treat it as serious but there are some things that really can cause misery and those are usually things that give you a great sense of, um, of uh, not satisfaction, but pleasure, and you want more, especially if you start using terms like euphoria and that kind of stuff, you're going in the wrong direction. It kind of got off on the wrong start though in this video, I didn't want to focus too much on that. Instead, let's, let's focus more on just regular discouragement. You know, sometimes you are justified in feeling discouraged within your life or in business as something that you're trying to accomplish. And so that's the first question I want to ask you, is is it justified that's the self-analysis evaluation that you have to do is ask yourself is this discouragement justified and in the context of business we've talked before about performance analytics and looking at the metrics that you use to measure the success of your business and the most obvious one might be uh, profit and then we said well let's go up a little bit higher on the uh financial statement on the income statement and look at sales. And then I said also maybe get a little bit more granular and look at performance metrics that lead to leads, that lead to more customer acquisition and that lead to sales, which leads to profitability. So spend some time doing that if you haven't already and make sure that the discouragement you're feeling is justified because you can celebrate the small successes. You might find that you're getting a lot more web traffic, unique visitors on your website, as an example. You're getting much more social media engagement. And upstream from profitability, upstream from sales, you're experiencing a lot of growth in your business that hasn't shown up yet. It hasn't manifest on the bottom line, but it will. You can have confidence that it will. If you check that out, if you spend the time to analyze that and you see that you are growing, then don't hit the panic button. Stay the course. Remember that you're probably on the right track and it just is going to take some time for those things to play out. And that should deal a little bit with, with some of that discouragement. You know, it's about perspective and you look at it and you go, oh, well, actually I didn't realize I, I was feeling discouraged because I wasn't profitable or my profit was stagnant or whatever. And then you look at a different performance metric. Now I'm not suggesting that you should look wherever you can to try to justify in your mind um, that you are successful. There, there might be some merit to doing that to making yourself feel good, but you don't want to dilute yourself. You don't or delude yourself rather, not dilute. You don't want to delude yourself when you're on the wrong track. And so the first thing in this discussion that I want to guide you toward is a self-analysis. Is the discouragement justified? And if you find when you do that analysis that it indeed is justified, like maybe you look at those more granular performance metrics and you ascertain, yeah, I'm, I'm not growing, I am discouraged. Then I want you to ask yourself, is there a reason that you can isolate? Can you pinpoint why that it's justified? For example, perhaps you've been procrastinating on doing some things that you know you need to do. There are some things that in your plan that you've created for yourself that you know need to be implemented in order to logically acquire the success and the growth that you're planning for. If you haven't done those things, if you've been putting them off, then right now you should get to them. Another thing that you want to think about is whether you've been getting too complicated and, and trying to maybe innovate too much or something like sometimes people get off course 
and they just need to go back to basics. Whenever I'm feeling discouraged, whenever I'm not sure if I'm going in the right direction, I just sort of take some time out, back up, and then get back to basics. Examine the fundamentals, what you know for sure. First principle thinking, what do you know for sure works? And are you implementing that consistently? Have discipline every single day. Are you engaging in those activities that are very um, predictable in terms of the outcome? Go back to basics. They call it the KISS principle. K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. Don't get too wound up in all the latest this and that. You, you might be reading an article and then you're thinking, oh my goodness, we're not doing uh, our um, uh, geo-targeting, geo-fencing. We're not doing uh, our negative keywords in our marketing. Sometimes those are things you need to focus on, but you can get, as they say, caught up in the thick of thin things and need to get back to basics. If you're too focused on some sort of really detailed thing about your business and you've lost sight of the basics like following up with customers like um, making sure that your customer experience is second to none and that you are beating the competition in terms of convenience and overall value get back to basics that's the next thing i would advise you to do i want to give you this concept of paradigm and, and paradigms that uh, dr stephen covey starts his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I think within the first chapter or two, he touches on the concept of paradigms. So if you have a paradigm, he describes as like a mental map. And so your paradigms in life are founded based on your upbringing, your, it could be your socioeconomic um, environment throughout your life, your parents, your teachers, your friends, all of these things affect your mental map, the way you think and what you believe. And he, he has a really good analogy that if you think, if you carry through this analogy of a mental map as a literal map, and he said, if you had, uh, I forget the cities he uses, but let's use um, a map of New York and someone placed you in the middle of Chicago and asked you to find a destination, a specific address, then he says, in, if you have the wrong map and the wrong paradigm, the wrong mental map, attitudes and behaviors do not matter if you have the wrong map. And so the example, if you're in Chicago with a map of New York and you just don't realize you've got a map of New York and you're trying to find a specific address and you've got a positive attitude, you're still gonna get lost. But with that positive attitude, you won't carry your loss, but you're still lost and that's not very good. And in terms of behavior, you say, well, I'll just work harder. I'll just work harder. And all you're going to do is you're going to get lost twice as fast. And so the first thing you have to do, and in the context of discouragement, you want to consider this because do you have the proper paradigm? If you've got the wrong mental map, then your attitude won't really make a difference and your behaviors won't make a difference. In fact, your behaviors and a, a strong work ethic can get you in trouble even faster with the wrong paradigm. So once we switch out those maps in the analogy, you're still in Chicago. Now we give you a Chicago map. Now your attitude and your behavior really matter. If you have the right paradigm, if you have the right map, then of course having, you know, you might encounter obstacles on your way to your destination but your positive attitude matters because you've got the right map, you know you're on the right path. And, and certainly also with your behavior, if you work twice as hard or whatever, you can get there twice as fast. So let's keep that in mind when you're discouraged. Ask yourself if what you've been doing is not working and it never has been working. If, again, back to first principles, what do you know for sure? If you don't know that what you're doing is a good plan, I want to start there, start there and maybe um, adjust your paradigm. The way Ayn Rand talks about it in her book, Atlas Shrugged and, and other um, literature and interviews, she talks about the fact that there is no such thing as uh, contradictions. And she says, when you think you've encountered a contradiction, check your premises, you'll find that one of them is false. And Stephen Covey's way of wording that is that the, the symptom of an improper paradigm 
is a dilemma. So if you're experiencing dilemmas or apparent contradictions, that's a good bet that your premises are wrong or that your paradigm is incorrect and you need to go back. And that can be really difficult to accept because remember these paradigms are founded in a lifetime of experience and belief. And you should always be learning. One that I always like to point to is the nutritional paradigm. There, throughout, depending on how old a person is, they may have experienced two or three nutritional paradigms in their lifetime. Uh, but in the, I believe it was more like the 80s, it became very popular for the notion to be the best way to eat was extremely low fat. And what happened with that paradigm is that um, companies that manufactured food products were, they realized that the, the flavor was diminished because of the removal of a bunch of fat and they wanted to market that their products were low fat. So they just replaced that with a lot more sugar. And what we know now is that uh, Ansel Keys and all the literature behind low fat eating was completely flawed and it, it's wrong. So you would, let's say you were trying to lose weight and you had the wrong map because you believed the low fat uh, paradigm, then you probably weren't going to experience any results. Remember the attitude and behavior don't matter if you got the wrong uh, paradigm, the wrong mental map. And so once you replace that and you find out, you know, good healthy fats, are incredibly satiating and they're important for your nervous system and for so many functions in the body. And they can make, and, and sugar on the, uh, conversely, sugar uh, has a, an insulin response and actually tells your body that response, that uh, message, that chemical message that insulin sends to your body is to store fat. And fat doesn't do that at all. You eat all the fat you want and you're never getting uh, a hormonal response with insulin that tells your body to store that fat. So with that paradigm, and maybe you want to disagree with me on, maybe you still have a different paradigm of nutrition. My point isn't that um, I'll have all the science details laid out for you 100%, but the paradigm guides your attitudes and behaviors. And if you are spending all your time trying to accomplish a particular task, especially in business, but in life in general, and you've got the wrong paradigm, no wonder you're discouraged. It's not going to work. So hit the brakes, hit the, as Toyota would say, the and on cord, stop the line and check your premises, check your paradigms, make sure you've got the right mental map. We talked a moment ago about perspective and another thing that is, I think, very helpful for people who are discouraged, especially if your discouragement is not justified, you're just um, sort of feeling down like it's not happening fast enough, it's perspective that needs to happen. Like, you want to be careful comparing yourself to the Joneses, you know, what does my neighbor have? What is that other person who runs a business? Uh, what is his sales trajectory and everything? It's okay to look at that stuff, but be careful because it can be very misleading. And sometimes you have bad data. So perspective, I would invite you when you're feeling discouraged to look at the various problems that other people out there have and maintain some perspective. In the bigger picture, often what gets us discouraged on a particular day might get upset, frustrated about something. And then you hear about somebody else who maybe just um, had a terrible health diagnosis or they lost a loved one or something like that. And you, you kind of got to hit the reset button and go, goodness, I got to maintain some perspective here. I can't believe I was so discouraged and upset about, you know, I didn't hit my projections or my specific goals when in fact I, I still have the relationships around me and I, and I'm not suffering with what that other person is having. And so maintain perspective. That's a really important point. And sort of the flip side of that, or another way to look at that, is to be grateful. Gratitude is incredibly empowering. Be very grateful for all the things that you have. There was a guy who did a TED Talk a while back, and 
I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. I, I should have researched it and looked it up. Um, but he talked about the Harvard students and doing some um, surveys of Harvard students, I believe. And in general, they reported that they weren't as content as maybe other students. And what it was, was that relative nature where they were comparing themselves to the success of other Harvard students. If you're going to a very elite university or you find yourself at the very pinnacle of success and everyone around you is very successful, that's great, congratulations. But be careful that you don't associate your identity and your worth, your self-worth, your value with how you compare to other people. Um, you know, I guess that it is the flip side of the coin because if you really had perspective, you'd go, well, compared to the rest of the world, I'm doing great. And so uh, back to the concept of gratitude, what he recommended in that uh, speech was to focus on gratitude. And I would encourage you to think every day, maybe the first thing when you wake up, maybe a little bit before bed, write it down. Uh, really, I think you, you should spend the time to document it and write the things you're grateful for, because that'll help you maintain perspective in light of some discouragement. And discouragement is completely normal. This too shall pass. We've all met somebody that maybe externally should appear as though they should be upset. We, we, we maybe observe and comment to them or to someone else when we're talking about them. We say, wow, that person's always in a great mood, like just a great attitude or whatever. I submit to you that that person is probably grateful and focuses on gratitude. Assuming that they are being transparent about their real feelings, if a person who you look at and it seems them, maybe they don't have a lot of money or whatever, maybe they're grounded in things that really matter and your perspective is what other people think of you and how many luxury items you have. Those things get old pretty quickly. It's nice to have nice things, I get it, but do not tie your overall happiness and contentedness in life to whether you have all those things. Instead, focus on what you do have and be grateful for it. Doing that, somewhat ironically, will lead you to get more things. And But you'll realize that the more things aren't what makes you happy. It's maybe the productivity, the sense of achievement that's going to make you uh, more satisfied and happy, as opposed to the things that you accumulate. And lastly, what I'd like to talk about is the concept of motivation. Too many people mistakenly believe that action will follow motivation. As soon as I'm motivated, I'm going to start working out again. As soon as I'm motivated, I'm going to do that thing I've been procrastinating on. I just can't get motivated. Too many people mistakenly believe that action follows motivation when in fact the opposite is always true. That is, motivation follows action. So if you find yourself lacking motivation, what I want you to do is take action. That's why we start almost all of my videos by asking you, do you have pen and paper? And will you write down an actionable item, something that you can implement today? Those things can be very satisfying and gratifying. You can take solace in knowing you did something, especially if it's something that's in your plan and you've been putting it off. So remember, you're never going to get motivated like something that overcomes you when you're sleeping and you wake up and you go, oh, wow, I'm motivated today. No, you need to act. You need to be productive. So figure out something that you need to do and do it and watch how it makes you feel. You'll feel a little bit more motivated and then continue that. That's where the discipline, you small, uh, form small habits repeatedly every day. Do these things that are actionable. And when you do them every day, you'll find motivation follows. And I think, you know, as I said, this too shall pass. You'll, you'll overcome that discouragement. So in a nutshell, that is it. That's what my recommendation would be to you to overcome discouragement. First of all, you have to do that assessment. Is this discouragement justified? Yes or no? If so, then ask yourself, 
why, what should I be doing about this? And if it's that you are starting with the wrong mental map, the wrong premise, the wrong paradigm, you need to change that first. Hopefully you got something out of today that you can use in your business today. Thank you very much for watching. Keep perpetually refining. Thank you.